Hello, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to my little live video. Even if you watch this on um, while after it's archives, this it will be a good topic. I believe that you should watch. Now, one thing I do want to say is um, Young Living, they suggest not using, as so forth, not to use plastic, but I bought these plastic bottles and I don't want to waste them, so I'm going to use them because the oils break down the plastic. But anyway, I was going through my oils because this afternoon I couldn't find my purification. I wanted to diffuse an oil and I couldn't find purification and I ended up diffusing my stress away. So I'm looking for looking through my oils and I organ and then I decided to organize them. Never did find purification, but I decided to organize them and I put all the small ones up front and I was putting all the ba the bigger ones. I have um the little bottles like this and then I have the bigger bottles. And I put all big ones in the back small ones in the front and I'm going through them because I'm trying to find the purification and I found a purification one that my kit came with as in the little one but there's nothing in it anymore I keep it because when I will show people you know they, you can still smell them so um I came across this one I don't even know how to pronounce it but this one came I'm a part of um the essential awards and this one came in, like, once you join what we call ER, which is Essential Rewards, you commit to buying at least $50 a month worth of stuff. And you earn points back on things you buy, and you can apply those points towards certain purchases, um, oils, that kind of thing. Like, so if you run out of something and you don't want to wait till next month's order... You can put a quick order in and only pay for shipping. Um, but one thing is, if you spend, you have to spend a minimal of fifty dollars a month. If you spend a hundred dollars, they give you an oil, whatever oil they choose, for whatever month they're promoting something. Then it's like some maybe like two hundred. I never went above like maybe one fifty, but so I don't know what the next tier is. There's different. You sell 200, you get this, you know, whatever. I, I'm not exactly sure. And since I'm on my phone, my computer's in my office, I really can't even, like, look it up. So I'm doing this from memory. But, so, this is what it is. I'm going to bring it to you here. I don't know if you can see it. I can't pronounce it because it doesn't have your typical, um, like it's scholar sense. So anyway, I'm like, what's this thing? And I knew I got it one, one, um, month in my order. So I'm like, what is this thing? And so I, um, looked it up, but in here it also talks about it. And what you do is, cause it's vitality. They suggest you can you know, pretty much consume, eat vitality oils. Um, you're not supposed to the other ones, but if it's grapefruit, how harm can grapefruit do whether it's vitality or not? So I do it anyway. But anyway, um, so this one, this is dilute one drop with one drop of carrier oil. So the carrier oil that you choose, olive oil, coconut oil, whatever. So that way you can use it. And then you can, this one suggests is to put in a capsule and take three times daily. The one online I read, you can put it in water and drink it. So, um, first of all, this is one thing videos won't show. You can't smell it or taste it. So, anyway, it has almost like a tea. It's a refreshing taste to it. It's a weird taste at first, but I was like, it's pretty good. It's refreshing. In, in it, it has clary sage. Uh, flowering top oil, peppermint, which is the mint taste, 
Ario parts oil, Spanish sage, leaf oil, fennel, seed oil. So it basically has sage and peppermint. Yes, it's basically sage and peppermint. So why am I bringing this up? So I look it up and it talks about, um, I'm probably going to use hot words in here, but I really don't care to be honest with you because I'm going to move that and just block something because, um, I want to share with you something that had happened to me in 2008 and something I kind of still struggle with, but I've gotten to an acceptance about now because of my age and, and you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about, but it talks about hormonal imbalances for, uh, women. It's like women hormones and stuff. So, um, my, uh, monthly thing is due in a few days. No easier way to say that, but I was getting, starting to feel bloated and kind of crampy and miserable. Like you start to get right as you're in that waiting t- period of between that and that. <clears throat> and I put a couple drops of this in my oil, my water, and the kind of feeling I got that was in the a- afternoon it was the one away. I was feeling pretty good. So, but I figured this would be a good time, if any, to kind of share something I've never really talked about. I've, I mean, I have talked about it in a sense, but I've never really expressed my emotions on it. I kind of suppressed them in, but back in 2006, I guess you could say November 6, 2006. I found out I was pregnant with my daughter. It was delighted, a delighted time. And, um, because my, that year, my grandmother had fallen down the steps, like in December of 2005. And my family was going through a lot of turmoil. And I took myself, well, I had just gotten married in April. And by the turn of the year of 2006, I decided I was I wanted to try to conceive because I had some hope that if I would tell my grandmother who was in a coma at the time that I was pregnant, it would give her hope to live. So I conceived relatively easily. It was about nine months and, um, it was a rough pregnancy. I didn't feel that I deserved happiness didn't deserve her um so during the pregnancy I never really had that attachment right away uh, I was almost I was almost like I I've always had a fear of disappointment so I didn't want to get attached to her because I knew all the statistics of miscarriages and and so forth and so I was afraid that I would get attached and I'd miscarry especially since when I first started going in for ultrasounds she was measuring two weeks behind and they were giving me a bunch of ultrasounds because they wanted to make sure she was still alive that there was a heartbeat and then they found out I had toxo and they wanted to make sure it was an old infection and not new infection because a new infection is bad an old infection is good uh so I didn't really grow attached right away. I kind of like was keeping my distance. And meanwhile, the hormones with me throughout my pregnancy, it was pretty nasty, emotional person. Um, my husband and I fought a lot. Uh, it was pretty nasty to everybody around me. And then, um, I got over the threshold and I still, I was excited, but I wasn't like super excited. I was more tired by the end. So she was born July. She was due July 13th and I woke up on July 13th and I felt this leak in my water and I went in and, um, first they sent me home, said that I was crazy and that I had, they thought I was a couple more weeks because remember it was two weeks behind 
but you always go with your maternal instincts. So her second due date was July 21st. And so I went home, tried to go to sleep, tried to relax. And lo and behold, it, the, the water kept getting faster. So I went back to the emergency room and they examined me and they said, you have fluid in your cavity down there. We're going to go look at it under a microscope. We'll be right back. And they left. And my mom's like, what do you think that is? I said, mom, I know the anatomy down there. I said, what do you think it is? Really? There's only one or two things it can be. So they came back and I'll never forget. They came back and, and the lady goes, you ruptured your membranes. We're going to have to induce. So, um, that was July 14th. They decided to induce by 3 o'clock. They started it at 7. And then by 1.49 a.m. July 15th, they entered the world at 6 pounds, 14 ounces. 21 inches long. So then all was well. You know, I adjust it as um, a new mom. I was... 24. Um, I was married for about two years. I um, worked pretty much a lot. Um, I took off for like, I didn't go back until Labor Day. I worked at Dorney taking pictures. Uh, I worked at the IU. I was doing dinner theater. There was a whole bunch of stuff I was had going on at once. And um, but I adjusted pretty well to becoming into this role. Yeah. as a mom and again I don't know why I just felt like something was going to take her away from me here we are she'll be 11 this Sunday and <sighs> she's still alive I was like I can't believe I kept you alive this long <laughs> but um at the advice of some family members that I had um I always wanted to have a big family. I envied people with big families. People with six kids. People with, you know, a lot of kids. You know, I wanted, oh, when I was a kid, it was just me and my brother. And, I wish, and my mom had a miscarriage when I was 12. So, and I had, a, she had a feeling it was a girl. And she miscarried. So, I always had that, like, black cloud hovering around me, like, thinking my sister, you know, could have been my sister. Like, how would have life been different for my sister, you know? And I um, always envied people that had more than one, like, brother or sister, at least. And I was always like, you need a pair, so more than four, but, you know. So, that was the plan. I wanted to have it, and I wanted my kids to be close in age because my brother and I were almost seven years apart. And when we were growing up, we couldn't stand each other. We were constantly fighting. It wasn't until I got married and moved out that he and I started getting along. So, out of, back to what I was started to say. Following the advice of some people in my family, they said you're most fertile right after you give birth. So, you want to get yourself on birth control. So, I looked at. You know, my uh, six-week appointment was coming up, and I looked at all the the options, and, you know, I knew I wasn't good with pills. I knew I wasn't, I didn't want any, I didn't want the Debo shot, because I'd been down there, down that path when I was younger. Um, all this different things. And I got a publication for an IUD. And it was like, you keep, there were two of them. I don't know if they have any more at the time. There were two of them, and... Uh, one had the same, one was for five years, it had the same hormones in it as a Depo shot. One was for ten years, <coughs> and it was just copper, it didn't have any hormones, the power guard. So I took that one, because I had this negative thing about Depo. So, I, um, that was, I went in, this 
It's like September or, or October of 2007. It was a couple of months later. That and I said, okay, let's get you on birth control. Which one do you want? Okay. And that was the one I picked. And they put it in and walked away. Everything was okay for at first. Um, during, while I had it, I didn't have it in very long. I didn't like it. I didn't like the way it felt. I just, yeah, I always felt like, almost like when you eat something with a lot of gas that produces a lot of gas I felt like that all the time my monthly cycles were big fat clots it, it you know to the point where I was doubling over in pain and uh, I was calling off of work and all this kind of stuff so I walked in uh, when was it July of 2008 and I pretty much begged them I said I don't I don't want this take it out you know I'll deal with the repercussions you know whatever if I have a baby that's okay I'm okay with having another baby and you know she's almost a year old or she is a year old she was a year old July of 2008 so they pulled it out and August of 2008 we went to Seaside Heights for the first time as a family and then came back shortly after, and I found out I was pregnant. I think I conceived in September of 2008, and then I found out I was pregnant October 12th, 2008. I um, was with a friend who was visiting out of town, and I was with my, my best friend and her daughter, who was like eight at the time, and Faith. And we were at Dorney, and we're just hanging out all day. And this friend from out of town was telling me about um, how she she was having these signs. And um, I said, sounds like you're pregnant. Oh, maybe. I don't, I don't know. She was in a committed relationship, engaged to somebody. She ended up marrying somebody else. But And um, she's like, oh, yeah, um, what, I don't know. And, uh, and you know, she was doubting herself. So I'm sitting there, and I said, hmm, I don't remember if I've gotten mine this month. So I dropped off my friend, and my best friend, and her daughter, and I went out to CVS. And Danny was at his parents' house watching wrestling or something. I went out to CVS on the way home. And I stop off and I buy a pregnancy test. And I was pregnant. It was two months, you know, and I was excited. And I called him up. And then, you know, a couple of days I had a call. I called my doctor and they put me through. It was different. Even in a year it had changed. They were like, you got to come in for blood work. I'm like, but the, no, you still got to come in for blood work. So it was nerve wracking. And I didn't want to go through it you know the whole the emotional roller coaster even though faith was fine and so I went to the doctor twice like in a week you gotta go like every two days and you get your count read and the first one was like 700 and something and the second one was like 2000 something and they're like that ah, you're pregnant they're like no we gotta schedule you to come in and um when was your last period and all this stuff so they gave me an estimated um due date is june 17th 2009 so i got the green light and i was excited because and i had one of those where they scan you because at that time it was like five weeks six weeks maybe and you know you go in and they have the machine i don't know it's probably different now but you put one end on your belly the other end's like a box, and it picks up the baby's heartbeat. And they're like, you got a healthy heartbeat, and yep, and they marked it, do, 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 do. come back November 21st for your first ultrasound. So I'm all excited, right? Um, I started getting visions. I got visions when I was pregnant with Faith of what he, I knew it was a boy. 
I knew what he looked like. Um, I was excited. In this pregnancy, I, I figured I was safe. I got excited. And I was looking forward. As my kids then would, were a good, healthy age, they would be 23 months apart. Almost down to the day. And, you know, I was like, oh, you know, I had the vision that he had hair like mine, but it was brown. And, um, didn't even get a chance to name him. And I went in November 21st. My best friend went with me. And they gave me an ultrasound. Which I still have. You can barely see anymore. But they gave me an ultrasound. Let me go get it real quick. <clears throat> Adjust myself. Okay. I found it in a box the other day. I used to have it taped up on my mirror. They gave me an ultrasound. Yeah, you can barely see it anymore. I have a picture of it somewhere. And... Again, strong heartbeat. There he is. This is back in 2008. They look so different now. So, strong heartbeat. They gave me, they pushed my due date back, but they did the same thing for Faith. I think they pushed it back June 21st or something. Um, I was 10 weeks in one day. And it was a vaginal ultrasound. She pulled out the little stick. And then she goes, oh. And I wasn't really paying attention to anything. And I was like, what do you... Oh, what? And she wipes the stick. She goes, you have a little blood on the stick. And I was like, well, is that normal? You know, because I've heard of people with, like, full periods and... You know, all this stuff that before you close up down there, it's likely to bleed. Or maybe it was sensitive because of the prong. I, and she goes, it could be, but just keep an eye on it. So they gave me three of these in different poses. My mom got one. My best friend got one, and I kept one. And I don't know where theirs ended up. And it is hard to see on here. Oh, there it is. So, that was 3.30 in the afternoon. Went to bed that night. Took my little ultrasound. Took a picture of it. Whatever. Scanned it in. However you used to do. And I did this. Right next on my nightstand. My mom did the same thing. And we fell asleep. I fell asleep. At about 3.30 in the morning. 12 hours later. I wake up, I'm half asleep, I'm laying in my bed, and I'm like, I feel, or no, at first I said, wow, this period this month is really heavy. I was like, in my sleep. And then I realized what I said, I'm like, period, I'm pregnant, I'm not supposed to feel this way. So I sat up and went into the bathroom, sat down, went to the bathroom, and I got up. And what I saw on the, the toilet scared me. And I knew I had a toddler, a young toddler, sleeping in the bedroom next to me. My husband was sleeping. He had a little work the next day. And I knew if I had to, any hope to save this baby, time was of the essence. I knew that I couldn't wake him up, wake her up, find somebody to take her, all this stuff. So I wrote them a note before smartphones. I wrote them a note. And I left. And I went to one of the hospitals. And the OBGYN that was on call was actually my OBGYN. And she was just about ready to deliver twins. My luck. So the doctor or whatever that didn't really know much... Um, couldn't confirm what it was and but he was like yeah they kept pulling things out he's like yeah you're bleeding pretty heavily from your cervix and 
I, I've said it this way. I said, you don't pray for hemorrhoids. But I was praying for a hemorrhoid. I was praying. That's what all it was. And um, they said, you have to call your, your doctors. On, and that's when they told me she was delivering twins. And they said, you have to um, call in the morning. Because it's like 4 o'clock in the morning. They said, and make an appointment and get seen pronto. They open at 9 a.m. It's call 9 a.m., came in about 10 o'clock. Went in the back room and had another ultrasound. And this time this ultrasound was a somber. No words, no communication, nothing. And doctor came in and shows me on the screen. You can almost see it here. There it is. Where is it? I don't know if you can see it. It looks like a little thumbnail next to the uterus. Here's the bubble the baby's in. And here it is, right? Let's see, could you? No, I don't think. You used to be able to draw on the screen. So, in this, he got another angle. And he had all the other ultrasounds, these ultrasounds, and then he had these other, these new ones. And. It was a totally, like here you see the bubble. Baby's in a bubble. That ultrasound was just like this. And he explained, he said, one in three pregnancies end in a miscarriage. And he said, and I said, well, what could have caused it? I had, a, I was confused because I had just had this healthy ultrasound not even 24 hours and he said we really don't know and he explained like in the animal world um, animals just give birth regardless and that a miscarriage is a way that our bodies know something is wrong and to, for to save my life if it gets rid of, gets rid of it then it's a threat and he said about it that they did a study in like the 70s and the majority of the miscarriages, they ended, they were um, birth defects, but serious birth defects, not like heart murmurs or, you know, that kind of thing. It was like, you have an arm growing out of your head type thing, I guess. I don't know. So, and he left me hope. He said, come back in like two months and we'll examine you. Um, sent me home. I cried. And I cried. I cried. And I cried. I cried until I cried no more. And I went back to work. And the day before Thanksgiving, because you always have to go to work the day before holiday. I'm standing there and I kept getting these stomach cramps. And I worked at Catasauqua High School. And I went in to the bathroom by myself. And I gave birth. In the bathroom at Catasauqua High School. I didn't see anything other than just clots of mat t tissues. And, and with each passing clot, I kept thinking, I wonder if this would have been his heart. If this would have been his hands. And... And I was so upset, especially in the first month. It was, like, devastating. Like, this child I felt was robbed. Like, I saw how much faith was loved and by my family. And I'm tearing up. And I could see that my child, my baby, I felt like I never... Never get, had a fight. He never had a fighting chance. And um, I remember thinking the wind was blowing in my hair. I was like, I never feel the wind or the sun on his face. And and I grieved, and I grieved, and I grieved. And then something happened, and I didn't grieve anymore. 
dusted it off and I moved on and I went to that OBGYN appointment and now it was December, it was around Christmas and he said, you have completely passed everything, your uterus has healed up nicely, showed me an ultrasound, <laughs> looked all scrambled, I, was like, well, I don't know what I'm looking at. He says, and I give you a clean bill of health. You can start trying again if you want right away, you know, and I'll see you in a few months with um, an announcement of that you're pregnant. I have no um, doubt in my mind that you won't be able to conceive. January came, February came. March came. Even I one lady by like April, she's like, she didn't know I had a miscarriage. Oh, you're getting so big. Uh, what? Excuse me. And May came. June came. You know, the ultrasound. The due date came. You know, came and went. Faith had her second birthday. And nothing. So a whole year passes. I go into the OBGYN and I said, what's up? And I wasn't on any kind of contraceptive because I don't know. I don't know what's up. Let's do some tests. Sends me for an ultrasound, sends me for this, sends me for blood work, does a urine analysis, does all this stuff and everything comes back normal. And has no explanation on what it what could cause it. And then, um, this is try maybe it's a little slow. We'll tr you know try try to um, come back in like six months. So I go, and I live life, and life goes on as it does, and. Um, I come back in six months and lo and behold, nothing. And doctor is now perplexed and confused and doesn't know what. Um, my daughter is now three and, um, <clears throat> decides to send me for all kinds of testing again even tries to code it so it would um my insurance wouldn't flag it I remember and you know I even went and I think my daughter was maybe about five I went for a uh, appointment somewhere some test somewhere in the hospital where they shot die up there and took a picture real quick to see if I had a blockage and nope but they found out my uterus was like this Said it was normal. I guess it just kind of floats around up there, which is kind of weird. And I did about six months of Clomid. Clomid came and went. The success rate for that was supposed to be real high. Nope. Uh, my husband went, got tested. Nope. And meanwhile, all around me, I'm hearing about babies. Somebody's having a baby. And I'm sitting there and I can't help but feel jealous. And, you know, my cousin gets pregnant. And I'm like, well, maybe the stork, you know, forgot. Like, what happened? Like, I've been wanting a baby for a while. And that was like, at that point, it was two years. And it was like false joy for people that, you know, baby showers I would be going to. And there was a lot, you know, because I was only like, 27 at the time and I keep watching the the calendar each page would turn and I was obsessive with it I would chart my temperature and I would keep record of it on my phone or I read every book I could read and done everything aside from putting my underwear on the outside of my head or something I don't know and I was to that, that extreme, like I was willing to try anything. And um, 
month after month went by and nothing. And then I um, started working in a daycare and my insurance switches switched. And um, again, I went, I went to a different OBGYN and he did pretty much the same thing the other guy did. And they were perplexed. They were, you know, on paper, my, my hormones, everything was fine. And they couldn't explain anything. And my new OBGYN gave me a business card and said their fertility rate is like 98%. You need to go see them. I, you know, there's nothing more I can do. And I knew what that meant. I knew that was big bucks. So I pretty much, for the sake of my sanity, had decided to just f forget about it. And I never really grieved properly because I felt around me like I did have some support but for around me I never really felt normal about talking about it and especially with um so something you don't want to say to somebody with secondary infertility is don't you want another one I hear that all, even now She'll be 11 in four days, and I still hear that to this day. Don't you want another one? And my response has always been, it's up to God now. I, and then they're like, oh, I'm sorry. And I have to explain, I had a miscarriage. And, uh, and um, or it's time for a brother. Yeah, you think I don't know that. So um, I've kind of let it go. It's like one of those bittersweet moment things where I am okay with it. I'm not completely okay with it. I, I would be lying if I said I was, but um, not to the point where I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, for some hunky dory. But if it happens, <laughs> awesome. If it doesn't, <sighs> then it doesn't. Because even if I were to get pregnant this month, my daughter would be almost 12. And uh, that's a big age difference. Remember, I wanted my kids close in age. And there's so much out there now for a baby. So many rules, too. Do I really want to go? I'm 35 now. Do I really want to go through all that? My biological clock is ticking. I think what did it was my acceptance was my 35th birthday in May. Um, I was reading that infertility increases at 35. And I was like, listen, if it's going to happen, it's going to be a miracle by God. There's nothing I can do. And maybe that's what he wants, you know. So I'm just letting it go and I'm trusting in him. So that's why when I was going back to why I wanted to talk about this was this oil. So I don't know. You know, because, like I said, hormonal imbalances and stuff. So, this is a good hormone booster. This is something, it's good for that woman's health. And um, I'm hoping, I'm going to try it until this little bottle disappears. And I'm going to chart or mark or think or something, journal something every day to see if I feel a difference. And if I feel a difference, great. So who knows, maybe in a few months I'll be announcing something. But I'm not doing it for that. I'm just doing it because of overall, as I'm getting older, you know. And they diagnosed me with not only secondary infertility, but polycystic ovarian. And um, with, along with that comes painful cramps and clots and all this other stuff down there. Cysts, hair, facial hair. Um bunch of different things weight gain like you can't lose weight so I that's what that's let me talk about that for a minute that's what young living is doing for me it is allowing my health awareness to be more in tune with what my body is and what my body expects so that way I can live a healthier lifestyle I lost I went from 232 in January and I'm down to well, today I'm bloated so I wouldn't count it but 205 
um, today it was 207, 208, 208, but, um, it's, I'm trying to break 200 and that's a hard number. So it's br given me an awareness of health. I've been trying to eat healthier. I, I developed lactose intolerance at 33. I, um, this year I had a bad bout of allergies, um, and then this infertility issue. So I am hoping that, um, that's what I want to get from Young Living is I'm not at first I joined because it was pretty, pretty oils, but there's so many oils for everything. So this is it. I know this video kind of went long and now I just flipped it. What did I do? That was weird. Okay. I don't know. This whole thing's weird. It just yelled at me. I wanted to tap the live button. 41 minutes of my story. So I hope I didn't bore you too much. But this is the video. This is the video. This is the oil. Um, tastes great. Pretty good. But I wanted to be a little transparent with you about my... Uh, women's health issues. So I don't know much about my father's side of the family. So I don't know if it comes from him because my mom, she's like, I never had trouble with my period. <laughs> I could write a book about things as never to say somebody with fertility or any kind of problems. So I hope you guys enjoy this and watch this and, um, whatever comment the link. I left my link in the box if you want to join you get your kit $160 you get 12 or 13 oils you get a bunch of samples it's retailed at like 200 300 dollars um but you won't pay 160 then you you're in and all you gotta do is buy 50 dollars worth of stuff for the entire year then if you decide to do the rewards it's 50 dollars a month and you get free stuff like this groovy oil so come check it out. Uh, if you have a question about anything, even if it's something that I shared personally, um, go ahead and comment. Share this with somebody who might be going through something that might benefit from something. I don't care. I want exposure. I'm tired of living like everything is okay. That's what the devil wants. He wants you to hold on to your stuff like nobody will cares about you. But there are people out there that do care. And the more you talk about it, the more you're going to get hit healthy. So, guys, with that said, I'm going to end this video now. And um, get ready for bed because it's 11 o'clock at night. Take care and God bless.